I did some research. Turns out a lot of the awesome people subscribed to this channel are into metal. I wonder why. Seems kind of random, right? Okay, no, it totally makes sense. So since most rock and metal guitar players or instrumentalists of any kind are self-taught and naturally drawn to technique and not so much to music theory, I want to provide a structured theory guide especially aimed at rock and metal enthusiasts because I know you probably don't want to learn super advanced chords that you will actually never use. You don't want to learn how to read complex sheet music and you don't want to spend hours on reharmonizing jazz tunes. You only want to learn what you absolutely need in order to play, compose and understand the music that you love. So here are the eight steps that I would follow if I had to do this all over again. Returning viewers of this channel have heard me talk about this quite a lot. There is no way around this. You got to have good or at least decent fretboard visualization skills. So unsurprisingly, my recommended first step is seeing the notes on the fretboard as you're playing, at least on the lowest three strings in your preferred tuning. Thinking in octaves will unlock the notes on the higher strings for you easily as soon as you master this basic foundation. If you need some more help with this and if you still have some blind spots across the neck, I added all the resources and exercises that you need in the description of this video, along with my fretboard mastery online course on patreon that one will fix this annoying problem for you in a matter of days most metal riffs are based on intervals you all know the legendary power chord but you probably came across other intervals as well And the thing is you can't mix and match those intervals, so those small chords together randomly. Some combinations simply sound better than others. And to save yourself from countless hours of trial and error when you're writing riffs, you should at least study the name, sound and function of each interval. Just practice and memorize them on the guitar like this. And I additionally recommend getting an ear training app on your phone that teaches you to identify the intervals quickly just by hearing them. When you start doing that on the train or on the subway to work, or yes, on the toilet instead of checking TikTok, you will be light years ahead as a musician and guitarist in just a couple of weeks. Up next I have a riddle for you. What is something that most pop songwriters and instrumentalists can do and most metal guitarists can't? No, it's not making money. It's about knowing which chords go into which key. But hold up, I know what you're thinking. I don't want to write ballads with campfire chords. I want to write riffs that snap necks and leads that melt faces. That's fine, me too. But even when you're working with single note riffs, with intervals, or even with high speed shredding arpeggios, <laughs> You absolutely have to know the chords in the key that you're actually playing in. So to do the bare minimum of theory studying when it comes to this, you should at least memorize the chords on each scale degree of natural major and minor. Yes, you will probably need minor much more. That way you can finally eliminate the annoying guesswork of always looking for the right next chord for your epic chorus riff, for example. As soon as you memorized all the chords on each scale degree in major and minor, you should learn about cadences. Remember how I said some interval combinations sound better than others? Well, even if you work with the right notes in your key, some cadences sound more catchy or simply better than others. So by learning about the most commonly used cadences in songwriting, starting in the era of classical music of course, and then going all the way into modern pop and rock music. You will instantly get a better feeling for writing amazing hooks and memorable riffs instead of always sounding almost great. I actually did some research on that when I worked on the metal song for David Hasselhoff. And the track has performed pretty good so far since the release. At one point you probably want to dive into the world of progressive metal or modern metal or gent. 
You will notice that a lot of acts in these genres work with odd meters, so something like 7, 8, 5, 4, or even 17, 8, like the Dream Theater song that actually won a Grammy this year. In order to enter this world yourself, you definitely need a solid foundation when it comes to rhythm. So music theory-wise, the bare minimum is knowing the names of all the most common note values and being able to switch between them on your instrument. But I can't recommend enough also learning how to count in odd meters. Aside from better timing and rhythm skills as a guitar player, you will also benefit by naturally coming up with ideas in odd time signatures after practicing them for a while. The big and seemingly well-kept secret when it comes to all of this is just dissecting big and scary looking meters into smaller groups. So instead of always counting 7, 8 like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, try to identify smaller groups in the riffs and rhythms that you're hearing. For example, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, and so on. As soon as you start hearing those smaller groups in odd meter compositions, you will have a much easier time with mastering them. If you're looking for a cool practical example, I posted a killer riff section earlier this week that switches from 5-4 to 4-4 and then to 6-4. writing this I didn't even notice that I was working with an odd meter because by actively working on that I got very used to thinking outside of 4-4. So if you are looking for some new and exciting guitar music and also some inspiration when it comes to odd meters, make sure to check out the full song on Spotify, I added the link below. And also follow me over there because I know you're always looking for something new and cool to listen to when you open the app. I think that you might like what I have for you over there. So the next topic is all about scales. I don't know about you, but I still remember my early metal songwriting days, always looking up cool sounding exotic scales on the internet. <laughs> Then after learning one scale position, immediately trying them out over my music and riffs and then being very disappointed because none of these scales actually worked over my songs. Waste of time. In case this happens to you as well, remember what we talked about in step three. This was all about learning what chords actually go into a key. And as you can see right here, the scale is actually always the foundation of your composition and the chords are actually all derived from the notes of the underlying scale. So if you want to work with more interesting scales like harmonic minor, melodic minor, phrygian dominant or super locker Please remember that you should use them as a foundation for your music and riffs as well, otherwise it might not really work. Except if your riffs look like this. If you're always just playing the lowest note of your instrument, you got plenty of freedom when it comes to your scale choices. One of the absolute biggest complaints I keep hearing from students when it comes to guitar solos is that it's quite hard to break out of the pentatonic scale or out of any other scale and that a lot of metal players feel like they're constantly working with the same ideas and licks all the time. So an easy quick fix to escape this monotony is learning how arpeggios and triads really work. Those are not just some shapes to memorize until you can play them at the speed of light with sweep picking. <laughs> You can actually melodically accent chord changes easily when you're improvising. That often results in this cool neoclassical symphonic metal guitar sound. But all of this only works when you understand when to use which arpeggio. Once again, the recommended bare minimum effort is studying one shape for major, one for minor, one for augmented and one for diminished. That will make it possible for you to start experimenting with arpeggios. And the next recommended step is studying the interval structure of seventh arpeggios because that way you can build your own shapes on the fly and you don't always have to rely on the one or two shapes that you have memorized. If you want to learn how to actually practice everything I talk about in this video, I highly recommend checking out the new intermediate music theory course on Patreon. That's a 30 day learning program I put together especially for rock and metal guitar players. So it's exactly what you need to finally get rid of those annoying music theory blind spots. If all of this is interesting for you, make sure to join the world's biggest guitar community on Patreon by clicking the link down below. But before you go, here's one more topic I recommend doing every single day to complete your metal theory essentials training. This one might shock you a bit. Try to play and improvise over non-metal music. <laughs> So here's the thing, I will never be the best blues, Latin or jazz player simply because I'm not in love or extremely passionate about those styles of music. But I learned so much theory and also technique wise from studying jazz guitar at the conservatory, from playing and jamming with blues bands or from playing on stage with Latin or even huge pop bands. 
and my metal playing and especially my songwriting got so much better and more diverse from these experiences. So that's just a friendly personal tip. I think it's a big mistake to limit yourself to just playing and practicing metal all the time. So please let me know about your current relationship status with music theory at the moment down in the comments. It's complicated. Make sure to subscribe right now to finally become a real part of our guitar community here on YouTube. Yes, now you're finally one of us. And download the brand new theory course on Patreon to finally conquer this topic once and for all. I will hopefully see you again in the next video. As always, the YouTube algorithm says this one is a great choice in case you're ready to keep watching. Talk to you soon. Greetings from Vienna and bye bye.